Hi everyone, this is Sharon. Today I have a design team project to share with you. This is a project for Christy at Everlasting Journals. I am excited to announce that I am now a regular member of her design team. So I will be making a project about once a month or so uh, using her digitals. So this first regular monthly project, I made um, an ephemera holder. And it is something that I made to contain and organize and store all of the prayer cards that I have that I use in my prayer journals. So we'll take a quick look at it and then I will spend the rest of the video actually showing you step by step how I constructed it. So I'm just holding it all together with a sari ribbon. And if we open it up, um, you can see that it's actually made in a flip-flop style uh, construction. So I've got a cover, and then in this first kind of signature, I've got some pockets in there, and then I've got some ribbons where I've tied in little um, tracing paper bags that I made, and we'll make these on camera as well. And then in each one of those, I've got... Um, some of my cards and I've got them all kind of organized and separated by type. Um, so this one, for example, these are all my kind of lacy antique ones. So I've got those two packets and then here I've got two more packets. And then in flip-flop style, we get to the back cover and then on this side, there are two more. So I'm able to store quite a bit, quite a few cards with this ephemera holder. So if you're interested in knowing how I put this together, stay tuned and I will take you through it step by step. I thought I would start out with showing you how I created the base for my ephemera holder. So this is the one we'll be using to make today's project. And I created this from a hanging file folder, something just like this. I've got a ton of these. Um, and I thought it would work really well for this project. Now these have these metal hangers in them. So what I did was I took my craft knife and just very carefully um, separated this and pulled it apart. Sometimes the glue is old and isn't sticking very well and you can just open it and peel it. But these are stuck down pretty good. So I opened each side up and then I pulled out the metal pieces that were in there. And then what I did was I then took those sides and then glued it back down again like it was originally. And I thought that would just strengthen that edge of the folder. Um, the other thing you could do if you don't want to mess with all that, depending on what size you want, is you could just cut this right off and not deal with all that. But if I did that, my holder would not have been as wide as I wanted it to be. So that's why I went through the extra work so I could get the extra width. And so the measurements on my holder are four and three quarters wide by eight inches tall. Now what I did then was create, other than the original fold, I created a couple extra folds and just created this M shape, similar to what I did for the last um, journal I made, the flip-flop journal. Um, this is kind of a flip-flop ephemera holder. So I just have this M shape now, and what that does is it'll give me three signatures, six sides, where I can add my um, bags and my cards. So this will be the first one, this will be the second one, and then if we turn it around, on this side, that'll be the third signature. So all total, I've got eight sides that I will wanna cover. So I'll have my front cover, my back cover, and then the six panels for the three signatures on the inside. And what I chose to cover my pages um, are these eight images. And I went through Christie's kits and I decided to work with kit 27 and kit 28. She numbers all of them. Um, so her kit 20, uh, 28, 
think I have that right. Yep, is this one where I pulled these eight images from. Um, it's got a lot of um, antique drawings and architectural images, some wallpaper, but it's got a very much of an angel kind of heavenly theme for, to it. So I thought that would be perfect for my prayer card holder. So these are the two that I picked for my front and back cover. And then for my first signature, I am going to cover that with these two images. And then my second signature, I paired up these two. And then for my third, I paired up these two. So I will have to cut out those eight individual um, images. And then I also, in that same kit, um, she's got these kind of um, smaller ephemera type images. So I'm going to cut each of these out also, and I'm going to use some of these strips to decorate my pockets. And then I thought maybe I would embellish some of the pages with some of these images as well. And then lastly, I went to her kit 27, which is um, a kit of background pages, a lot of wallpaper type images. And I picked six of those to coordinate with my six um, panels for my signatures. So I've got these two and these two and these two. And I'm going to use, I printed those on paper. I'm gonna use those for my pockets where I insert my bags of um, cards. And then I also printed those six images on some tracing paper. And I'm gonna use this tracing paper to make my bags to hold my cards. So those are the images we're working with today. Um, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go and cut all these panels so that I can adhere those to my base. And I know that some of these are a bit too wide. I'll have to trim them down, but I just sized them all so that um, the length top to bottom was what I needed. So I will do that and then I will be back. Okay, I have all eight panels cut to size, and my next step will be to take each of these and glue them onto the appropriate panel. And what I'm going to be using is my Scotch Create glue stick. I prefer glue stick for this type of application um, because I can get a full edge to edge coverage through the whole thing and I can make sure the edges are well glued and then that way I won't have any edges or corners kind of curling up on me. So I will go do that and then we'll come back and take a look at how we might want to embellish our pages a little bit further. Okay, this is crafting on the fly. <laughs> I started gluing down my panels, but as I was doing that, I had a thought about how I want to put these pages together. So what I'm thinking is I would have a pocket at the bottom of each page where I would slip my bag into that contains my cards. And what I was thinking is I might also want some ribbon that I can pull up from the page and tie around the bag just to hold that in place a little bit more. So... Before I glue down my panel, I think I want to create some little slots on each side and then take, I decided to use some seam binding ribbon and then I would thread that up through there first and then glue it down. So let's just kind of demonstrate this particular one. So on this page, I think I determined that I want the slots or the ribbon to come across kind of where these angel heads are. So I'm going to I think to make sure they line up on both sides, I'm gonna fold this paper in half and then maybe bring that in from the side about a quarter of an inch, maybe a little bit better than a quarter of an inch. And then I'm going to, hopefully that's wide enough. I'm gonna punch that, here we go. We're committed. Okay, so I've got those two slots in there. And then my thought is I'm going to thread this down and back up again. And then I'll 
cut that off and then I can glue my panel down. And what I think I'll do is take some art glitter glue and just run that right around each of these slotted holes. So that will help reinforce it and make sure it's all secured down really well so this ribbon isn't going to be ripping on this paper. I'll just make sure that that's all adhered together. I'll probably glue the ribbon. I'll put a bead of glue here and then glue the ribbon down and then put another bead of glue all the way around that hole before I attach it. So that will make it nice and secure. And then we'll have the ribbons in place before we put our panels down. Okay, so I am going to do that and then I'll be back. We'll work on the pockets and the embellishment after I have these base panels down, but I did want to talk about that before I got too far into it. I thought I would jump back on camera before I finished my last panel, um, just to demonstrate. I'll do one uh, fully demonstrated so you can see how I did these. So I've got my cover on, I've got my back cover, I've got all these interior panels with all my ribbons hanging down here, and then on this back side, I've got this panel down and I thought I would just demonstrate this last one because it is a bit fiddly. I'm trying to get this glued and get the ribbon threaded through there. So I'll show you how I do this last one. So what I'm going to do first is cover the entire back side of the panel. Oh, before I do that, before I glue it, I already have my little holes in this one. And I did show that to you, I think, on the very first one that I did. So I folded it in half, determined where I wanted those to be. And I'll talk about that in a little bit more in depth um, shortly. But I folded it in half, and then I took the slotted punch that I have, and I punched that out. Now, if you don't have one of these punches, um, you could do, use a craft knife to make some slits in there, um, or some scissors or something so that you've got two holes to thread your ribbon. Okay, so back to the gluing. Just gonna totally cover this. And my glue is a little bit mushier than normal because we're at 100 plus, um, heat index today in Wisconsin, which I know around the rest of the world, a lot of people have seen that this summer, but we, that's pretty unusual for us. It's extremely humid out there today too, so I feel like I'm kind of trapped in my house. Okay, I like to make sure I've got every square inch covered. I just keep my finger in that very last spot and then glue that down. I kind of went back and forth on whether I should thread the ribbon first and then glue or glue and then thread the ribbon. They're both kind of fiddly like I mentioned. So now I want to try to get this through here without getting my ribbon full of too much glue. And I determined the length of my ribbon and cut that before I threaded it. Let me just get my glue sheet out of the way. So now I've got this partially threaded and I'm going to pull this down to kind of figure out how far across I need to pull that so that my two tails are about the same length. Pull that back a little bit. That looks pretty good. So now I'm just going to glue this part down. I decided against using the um, art glitter glue underneath the ribbon just because I think I've got plenty of glue on here to keep that glue down. And then over on this side, I'm going to take, this is kind of the fiddly part, I'm trying to get this through there without getting the ribbon too full of glue. So. I am not doing very well. Okay. All right, so I've got that through. And I can always clean up my ribbon with a wet one when I'm done. So now I do want to just take a little bit of art glitter glue and 
put that across my ribbon so that all sticks down really well on the back side. Okay, so now I'm gonna bring my panel over here and get that lined up as best I can. I've got these cut just ever so slightly smaller than my base so that they don't interfere with the folds. Okay, so now I like to burnish my things down really well and I typically use a brayer and I'll just go across it so I can make sure all the sides and corners are burnished down well. Okay, and that's how I got my ribbon attached underneath, and now I'll just be able to tie that up over the top of my bags. All right, so we've got all of our panels on, and one thing I wanted to mention about that, you'll see that I've got my ribbons staggered. So, you know, this one's up here, and then this comes down and up and down, and these are rather high up on the page on this side, and I did that because I wanna stagger my bags on the page to distribute the bulkiness throughout this ephemera holder um, between the top and bottom. So when I come back in, my next step will be to put some pockets in here where I can stick the bag into, and then I will position those accordingly um, based on where I've got my ribbons. So I will be back with my pockets. Okay, I have done a little bit of work off camera on the pockets, just so I kind of got an idea of what I would like to do. So if we look at our holder, um, I created two pockets on this page. So I've got one here and one here. And what I did was I took some of these background papers um, that I showed you earlier, and I decided I wanted my pockets to be two inches high, and I tried to maximize the width as much as possible. Um, although I didn't bring them all the way to the inside because I didn't want them crashing into that fold there. So I brought them in a little bit from the outside on each side. And then I embellished them with some of the ephemera pieces in the front. So there's lots of pattern going on in this ephemera holder, which is what I like. It'll, it'll be uh, really interesting to look at it when I have to pull a card out. The other thing I did with my pockets was I created gussets and we'll do that on camera and do some together. But if you look down in there, the sides, I built those out with some gussets. So those bags or those little sacks can kind of sit in there nicely and they're not too tight. So this is what this page looks like. I have these two pockets on there. And then in this back signature, I've got these two pockets. So you can see I've got this one up a little bit higher on the page and this one down here. And I decorated those with some of the ephemera pieces. Um, so what we're going to do together is work on the pockets for this signature right here. So I already cut my pockets to size, and what I did, I just um, printed this on copy paper. It's not real strong, so I folded it over, doubled it up, glued the two sides together so it's a little bit stronger. Um, and then I also embellished these with some ephemera pieces on there as well, um, just to give them a little more interest. And these are going to go on the page, something like this. This one will be right on the bottom. And this one I'm gonna bring up about an inch from the bottom. So let's create our gussets. I've got a couple of extra off cuts of those. And how I made the gussets, now you can make these out of paper similar to um, what you have your pocket made out of. I wouldn't use cardstock because that would get a little too stiff. I've already made gussets with um, like cheesecloth and um, a lightweight muslin. You could use cloth as well, but today I'm just gonna use the matching um, paper. And what I'm gonna do for those is just fold over, I would say about three eighths to a half of an inch wide and then fold it again. So you've got something that looks like that. And then I'm going to 
cut that. So you've basically got something that looks like that. And I need two of these, one for each side of the pocket. So I'll make one more. And then cut that one. Okay, and then now I have to, I'm somewhat spatially challenged with these. <laughs> um, okay, oh, did I put an extra fold in there? I did put an extra fold on this one. I only need like three sides of two folds, and I think I made three folds, so I need to cut this one. Sorry to confuse you. Okay, so it's going to look something like this, like an S. And then I'm just going to line that up and cut it off where I need to. And then the one for this side is going to be, um, let's see, in a Z shape like this. And I'm putting the pattern paper to the outside and the white side to the inside. And then I'm just gonna cut that off. Okay, and then I don't really think I wanna see the white on the back, so I'm just going to ink those up a little bit. So I'm just gonna come over here and just take some ink and Kind of age those up a little bit so it's not a stark white on the back side. You could print both sides if you wanted to, or if you don't mind the light color, you're not really going to see it too much behind there just when you pull your pocket out. All right, got rid of our white. Okay, so now. This I'm going to glue onto my pocket so. Again, if you look at the S shape and you've got the pattern to the outside, I'm just going to glue this top. And then put that onto my pocket. Make sure that's stuck on there good because they will get a little bit of pulling on them. Okay, and then I will take this one. Now this one is, let's see, make sure I got this right. <laughs> it should be like a Z, so it should be going this way, this way, and this way, like that. And I will glue the top again. And then glue that to my side of my pocket. Okay, so I've got my gussets made. And now we can place it on our page and we're just going to glue it onto the page. So I'm going to glue these back sections of the gussets and then along the bottom of the pocket. So this tab on this side and then this one. And then I'm going to run some glue across the bottom. And then in this little um, kind of V area, the gusset itself, I'm just gonna put some glue in there as well to hold that down. And then we will place this on our page. And that's our pocket construction.
Okay, and then I just want to make sure that can pull away so you can see, hopefully you can see kind of on camera how this will give us some room in there. Okay, I am going to make the pocket for this side of the page and then I will be back. Okay, I have all my pockets in and I feel like this thing is turning into an octopus. <laughs> okay, so this is the cover, the front cover. Then this is the first signature. I've got my ties and my two pockets. Got both of those in now. And then here's the second signature, my two pockets and my ties, my back cover. And then over on this side, we've got the last signature with our two pockets and our ties. So what I thought I'd do next is to just maybe do a little embellishing on some of these pages. Now I did cut out some extra pieces from the ephemera um, sheets that she had included in her kit. And I think I'm just going to add a few of those in here and there. So on this first page, I thought this one would look nice down in this corner. So I'm just going to glue that on with my glue stick. I always like to add a little something, it seems, even though I do have already uh, a lot of pattern in this. But if you know me, you know I like a lot of pattern. Pattern and color. Okay. That looks pretty nice on there. And then I think that signature is okay. Um, this one, I like this blue piece right here. I thought that would look nice on this page somewhere like that. So I will glue that one on. Let's see, maybe something like that. wipe that a little bit. Okay, and then on this back cover, oh I know on this page I was going to put this little one maybe up in the corner here. Something like that. Yeah, I think I'm going to do that. I have to use every single piece because they're all so pretty. Okay. I think I'm gonna move it up a little bit. Yep, something like that. Okay, so on this back cover, I thought I would take this one and put that on there like that. Something like that. Okay. Okay, I think that is enough embellishing. So next up is to make our little bags or our little sacks. So I'm gonna get those items and we'll make one together. So I've been working away at my little crinkly bags and I've got five of them made and I've got one more to do, so let's do that together. This one's gonna go up in this pocket so these are really simple to put together. I've got um, this, and if you're wanting to know the size, it's eight inches by 
five and a quarter. And that's going to make a bag that's about three and a quarter by uh, just shy of five inches. It was five inches, um, but I cut these off on the top, so it's a little bit less than that. So what I do is just simply fold these over so they overlap. I would say about three eighths of an inch or so in the center of the back. So I'm just gonna fold that side and then this side. And then on the bottom, I fold that up both layers about the same as well, maybe three eighths to a half an inch. I'm making this one I'm folding up a little bit more because the cards I'm putting in this particular one are a little bit smaller than some of the others, so it doesn't have to be as tall. And then I pull this apart, and then I cut these side pieces off, and I, I cut them off slightly above this crease that I made. So just a hair above that. Whoops. And then, well, get that out of the way. <laughs> and then I cut it over this way, just slant it a little bit. I kind of ripped it that way. but. And then this side, I cut the same across, just slightly above the fold, and then again, angle it a little bit in. And that'll just give me a nice little place to fold up on the bottom, and it cuts the bulk out of there. So I'm going to glue my back seam. Now I'm using art glitter glue. I find that that's the only thing I find truly reliable on this type of material. Um, so I'm just going to glue the outside edge of one side and then the inside edge of the other. Um, yeah, like I was saying, I, I wouldn't trust a glue stick even fabric tack I haven't had always the best luck either getting that to stick on some of these kind of shiny materials. So then I just fold that back over. And then I'm just gonna double check to make sure I didn't get any seepage out of the seam. And then I'll just run some glue across the bottom. And push that up. And we just have to finish off our top. And what I do for that is I just fold it in half. And I'm using this pinking shears. And I just start in the middle and kind of cut across and then angle it down on the outside. And then it looks something like that. And so we have all six of our little bags that we can put in our ephemera holder. So let's start loading this up. We'll full refold this so we've got it the right way. And that's our cover. So in this first section, I'm going to make sure I match up my bags. So I've got this one goes on this side and this one goes on this side. And I took all my prayer cards and I um, separated them into six piles by style and size. So these are all kind of sepia, black and white ones. Um, so I'm going to put these in this bag. And then this pile, these are some of my really nice lacy ones. Stick these in here. Nope. This storage um, system will be so much nicer. I had these in a big plastic envelope, and it wasn't the best for eliminating dog ears and things like that. This, I think, will 
preserve them a lot better. So I'm just going to stick these into my pockets and then I'm going to tie those in there. And I've got a little bit of room, I think, in each of my bags to add more if I so desire. And also the pockets are a pretty generous size. So if I wanted to stick something in besides the bag, like on the back side, I could tuck that in or even on the front. So that's my first section. They're all tucked in there nicely and it looks really pretty. And then here's the next section. So I've got that bag goes there and that one goes there. And I've got some that are all colored ones and these are the larger sized ones that I have. And I'll slide those in on each side. And then tie those in. I might even let this sit out on my worktop because I think it's going to look so pretty. Hate to hide away all the prettiness. Okay, so that section's done. And then this last one where I've got these black ties. I've got my last two bags. So the size of these are getting a little bit smaller. And I cut these bags off a little bit shorter than the other ones, um, just because I knew I was putting the smaller ones in these. So, and that was part of the planning too. So this pocket where I stuck it toward the top of the page, I knew that these were gonna be a little bit shorter so they would fit in there fine. And then this one. that one in. I probably could cut these strings a little bit shorter. I think I will on this one. It's kind of long. I don't want to make them too short in case I add a little bit more in, but I think they're plenty long. And that is our last section. We've got them all neatly tied in there. I thought what I would do is also grab this sage sari ribbon and just use that to tie up the entire ephemera holder. So whether I put it on my desktop or throw it into a box or whatever, everything's tied in there nice and neatly. And that's it. So let's revisit the whole thing one more time open up the tie. We've got our first signature all tied in and then our second signature. This back cover and then on this side we've got these two in there. And I think that is a pretty fun way to store all of my holy cards. I hope you enjoyed that little tutorial craft with, with me or whatever you want to call it today. Um, I really enjoyed it. I loved working with these beautiful images of Christy. And I thank you for coming along with me. Until next time, bye-bye.